you guys. Good evening. So today we're going to be talking about, or tonight, we're going to be talking about electron configuration. So the thing to know, and this is going into more detail than we need to know, but electrons can be described by something called four different quantum numbers. And so these numbers describe different parts of the electron or different aspects of the electron. And they occur in very specific patterns following three different rules. The quantum numbers describe the electron, including the type of orbitals involved, as well as their energy level, specific location, and spin. So the quantum numbers describe those four different things. The energy level, the type of orbital involved, the location within that orbital, and then the spin of the electron. Now, um, we are not going to concern ourselves too much with the quantum numbers, except for two of them. We want to talk about energy level, which we can find on the periodic table, and we also want to talk about the type of orbitals involved. And there are four different types of orbitals that we're going to be talking about, S, P, D, and F orbitals. S orbitals are filled with two electrons, P orbitals are filled with six electrons, D orbitals are filled with 10 electrons, and F orbitals are filled with 14 electrons. So these are the things that we're going to be talking about, and um, we're going to be using the periodic table to figure all of this out. So some of the principles that guide quantum numbers. The first one is called the Aufbau principle, and this is the principle that describes how electrons are added to orbitals one at a time. So you can't add electrons more than one at a time, and we have to build up the orbitals as we, as we proceed from atom to atom. So as you go from atom to atom, you're adding protons, which means you're also adding electrons because of the neutral charge of an atom. If you're adding a proton to make a new element that adds a positive charge, you need to add a corresponding negative charge in the form of an electron. And so these electrons start to build up, and we add them one electron at a time to the orbitals. There's also Hund's rule, and Hund's rule states that every orbital in a subshell or will be occupied by one electron before any orbital is doubly occupied or spin paired. And so um, that means that as we add them one at a time, we go one into each location or each slot before we can doubly add them or spin pair them. This means that all electrons in singly, orbital, singly occupied orbitals will have the same spin. And then the third rule is the Pauli exclusion principle, or the Pauli exclusionary principle. And this states that um, the fact that no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. So you can have the same electron that's in the same energy level, orbital type, and specific location, but they have to have a fourth energy level, or the fourth quantum number that's different, like spin. And these are kind of things that um, a little get, bit go beyond what we really care about in, in terms of electron configuration, but it is something that you need to know about how these electrons are coming in and being added. Uh, any two electrons found in the same orbital must therefore be spin paired, so the fourth quantum number is not the same. So it's that same thing about um, electrons in the, being spin paired, meaning one goes up and one goes down. So putting it all together, when determining what an element's electron configuration is, you have to take into account all of these things. The Aufbau principle, Hund's rule, and the Pauli exclusionary principle. So we add them one orbital at a time. They have to be, each sub-level have to be singly occupied before we can doubly occupy any of them. And if you do put two electrons in the same sub-level, they have to be spin paired. And so we're going to start at the very beginning, as you should, by filling at the 1s. So, the pattern for filling orbitals is dependent on the following model. We have 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, etc. So what you're going to do is follow these arrows. So this is the best way that I can memorize the electron configuration. We can also utilize the periodic table to figure it out. But um, every time you go up an energy level, we add a new type of orbital. So we start with the 1s. Then we have a 2s, but we get to add a 2p. Then when we go up in another energy level, we still have 3s and 3p, but we're going to add 3d. Then when we go to 4, we have 4s, 4p, 4d, but now we have an f. And now we're out of orbital types, so we don't need to add any more. But that mean, means we have 5s, p, 
D, and F orbitals, 6S, P, D, and F orbitals, and 7S, P, D, and F orbitals. And then if you draw it out kind of like this triangle and then draw arrows going down like this, you can actually see the pattern. So it starts out with 1S, then 2S, then 2P, then 3S, then 3P, then 4S, then 3D, then 4P, then 5S, then 4D, then 4, 5P, then 6S, and we're going to stop there, okay? Um, it would then go on to 4F, 5D, 6P, and 7S. So you can see that it's not always just SP, S, then SP, then SPD, then SPDF. Um, there is some variation, like the 4S comes before the 3D. And when we look at the periodic table, you'll see why. Okay. So when we add this pattern and we add the electrons to it, we see that S orbitals can hold two electrons, P orbitals can hold six, and D orbitals can hold 10, while F orbitals can hold 14. So that pattern becomes 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, 3D10, 4P6, 5S2, 4D10, 5P6, 6S2, 4F14, 5D10, 6P6, 7S2. Okay? It gets kind of weird, um, but that's what we're going with. So if you put these orbitals, kind of lining them up, so I'm going to go all the way to the top here. Okay, so if you put these orbitals in ascending location, so for energy level, the first energy level, then the second, and we know that we fill S before we fill P, and if S holds two orbitals, there's one slot, one spin up, one spin down. P holds six electrons, so there's three slots. D holds ten, so there's five slots, and F holds fourteen, so there's um, seven slots. So we're going to fill this following those all those principles that we learned about. We're going to add them one at a time. So one electron goes here, then we spin pair it. Next, we can add it to the 2s, and then spin pair it. Into the 2p, we're going to add one spin up, and then we have to add it to each sublevel before we can start spin pairing it. That's according to Hun's rule. So we're going to add one to the middle orbital and then the far right. And now we can spin pair them, and so forth, and so on. So we just keep adding these electrons as they go. And this means that the bigger your element, so the further down the periodic table, that's what we're talking about when we get into these elements that have so many electrons. Because again, when we change the element, we change the proton number, which means we have to change the electron number as well. So that's kind of what this looks like. And this um, diagram right here is called orbital notation. So this is what if I was asking you to draw the orbital notation for the electron configuration, it would look like this. So the periodic table can actually be broken up and used much like a book to figure out all these orbitals. So if this is my periodic table here, the first two columns are my S block, but helium belongs over here as well. Then on the far right with all my gases and stuff like that, these guys are called the P block. The middle block is the D block, and the one below is the F block. Now you'll notice that there's a little bit of a pattern here. The S orbitals hold two electrons. Look how wide the S block is. It's two columns wide, one electron, two electrons. The P block, P orbitals hold six electrons. There's shockingly one, two, three, four, five, six columns in the P block. D block holds 10 electrons, guess how many? Columns wide, we are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And the F block, as you can imagine, is 14 columns wide. So this kind of breaks up the periodic table into these specific blocks or these specific orbital types for the electrons to exist in. And we can use the periodic table further, not just to find the types of orbitals that are going to be existing for these electrons, but also talk about energy level. Um, so the energy level is given by N, and as we go down the periodic table, each row we go down adds a new energy level. So this is the first energy level, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh energy level. 
Now, S electrons, their energy level is just the same as their location level in the periodic table, so they're just N. Same with the P's, okay? The D's are N minus one. So my D block starts in the fourth period, so N is four, but I have a three D orbital. That's my first D orbital is four minus one, which is three. Um, next row down, which is N equals five, is actually the four D orbitals, etc. And the same goes for F's where it's N minus two. So the F block start, starts in um, the sixth period, so the actual first um, F orbital is the 4F orbital. Um, and that just has to do with how these fill and when they fill. Okay. So I sort of went through this. Um, so as we go across, this would be the 3S all the way to the 3P. Then we have the 4S. This is now the 3D and then the 4P. Okay, so this explains why it goes from 3P to 4S, then to 3D, and then back to 4P. So 3D and 4S orbitals, there are special circumstances occur when attempting to fill the 3D and 4S orbitals, which explains why the 4S is filled prior to the 3D. So it's actually lower in energy than the 3D. That's why this is filled in first. So the 4s orbital actually has slightly less energy than the 3 d orbital, which is why it's filled first. Because essentially, this en energy increase is going up like this, and so that's the same as the amount of energy it takes to put an electron into those orbitals. So the higher up that is, the more energy it takes to put an electron up there. So we would rather fill the 4s before we can fill the 3 d which is why it goes that way. Um, there comes a trick, though, when looking at the arrangements when there should be nine electrons in the 3D orbital or four electrons in the 3D orbital um, because we actually then want to look for uniformity instead. So this is kind of an advanced um, situation. So I'll show you an example um, where we're going to talk about some of the exceptions, essentially. So copper has 29 electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Now, this kind of arrangement where you have 29 electrons and you have 9 electrons in this 3D orbital, so you're one away from what we call a full orbital, actually presents a situation where this is less stable. And so in order to create a full orbital on the 3D orbital, the 4S will actually sacrifice an electron and promote it and donate it to the 3D. So it takes away that electron and puts it up here so that you're able to create a full shell. It would rather have the full shell up there. But if we look at nickel, which has 28 electrons, so it's missing two, the energy required to actually donate both of those 4s orbital electrons up is too much. It's too great of a cost, and so the symmetry is too far away, so it won't do it. So the exceptions really there are coming with copper or silver or um, gold. Um, the same, though, goes for a partially filled. So chromium has 24, so it's got these four electrons. It has an almost almost partially filled orbital. So it will donate, again, a 4s to make a partially filled um, orbital, which is more stable. But again, vanadium is too far away. The cost is too much, so it won't. So again, you can kind of look at the periodic table and see those things. So this would exist for chromium, molybdenum, and tungsten. Um, but again, these are exceptions, so they're kind of um, a little bit out there, as always, chemistry does have an exception. So these are one of the exceptions. It's not necessarily the rule. So um, let's do an example. Let's find the electron configuration of magnesium. So magnesium has 12. If we look at the periodic table, magnesium has a atomic number of 12, which means it has 12 protons and therefore 12 electrons. 
So if we fill in all those 12 electrons, we can do two in the 1s, two in the 2s, six in the 2p, and two in the 3s. And so that is like our no orbital notation for magnesium. So then if we wrote out the electron configuration, we would say that it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s2, because there are two electrons in each of those orbitals, or six electrons in each of those orbitals. So what about oxygen? If we look at oxygen, it has an atomic number of eight, so it must have eight protons and therefore eight electrons. So when we put those in here, we get two in the 1s, two in the 2s, and four in the 2p. So our electron configuration is subsequently then 1s2, 2s2, and 2p4. So we only have four electrons in that 2p4. All right, I want you guys to do the electron configuration for arsenic. So pause the video and go ahead and do this one by yourself. And then press play and figure out if you were right. So if you did the math, arsenic has um, 33 electrons that are filled as such. So its electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and 4p3. What about silicon? Go ahead and pause it and try that. All right, silicon has an atomic number of 14. So it has 14 electrons to fill and they fill as such, giving us 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. All right, so it's just kind of reading the periodic table like a book and then filling it in one electron at a, time, at a time. The key here is remembering that as we change elements, we change the number of protons, which means we have to change the number of electrons as well. So we're gonna be practicing this a lot and we're actually gonna do some really fun stuff with this. I have some games that we're gonna play as well um, to help get this in your head. So I think you're gonna have a lot of fun. See you guys tomorrow.